What's going on guys, it's Brahmin at Empire Barbell and today I wanna to talk about the force first velocity curve. So I made a much more in-depth speed work video sometime last year that went into all the reasons I think speed work is overrated and why it doesn't do what it claims to do. It claims to make you move more weight in the form of one rep max by training very, very fast at lighter weights. I think that's garbage, I'm about to go over it right now. So last time I went into a lot about how muscle fibers work, the way they get recruited, and the time it takes to reach maximal fiber recruitment. Today I'm gonna to go a little bit more into how the actual filaments work and a little bit more about the strength velocity curve. So the two things we need to know, I went into this more, uh, more in depth last time, we have an array of individual muscle fibers, a group of muscle fibers that's innervated by one nerve ending, it's called a motor unit, so they all pull all at once from one impulse, and we have a lot of motor units. Now, your body only recruits so many at one given time, and recruiting the most amount that your body is capable of recruiting at once takes a finite amount of time. It's not something that happens instantly. It takes time to get to maximal force production based on how many motor units are being recruited simultaneously. Now that's trainable. You can train to recruit more motor units simultaneously. And then of course you can grow the actual motor units so each one puts out more force. But the maximal amount of force you put all at once, the most you're capable of pushing when you are straining and bearing down and giving everything you've got, that takes a longer period of time to reach than what you find that you do with typical speed training where you have very light percentages and you're trying to move very fast. The rep is actually over before you've reached that threshold. So that's an important thing to know. So step one, we're hindered by our ability to uh, recruit motor units. We're hindered by the time frame it takes. Maximal force production will always be a slightly slower endeavor. Now the thing I wanna talk about today is the time it takes to form cross bridges. So now instead of talking about motor units, we're gonna go inside each cell and look at the uh, myosin and actin filaments which are actually causing the contraction. So every time an ATP reaction goes off, ATP is a substrate that causes muscle fibers to contract, what you're getting are these, these uh, little heads on the myosin filament. Uh, we're getting the myosin to grab onto the actin and to pull and slide. Now, it's been a long time since anatomy class, I might be misrepresenting which part of these structures are called what, so don't hinge on this to get through your anatomy and physiology test, all right? This is, this is conceptual, guys. So the myosin is gonna grab onto the actin, it's gonna grab and pull, grab and pull. Every time an ATP reaction goes off, that's what's happening. Now the thing is, this is a chemical reaction. It is not trainable. You cannot make a chemical reaction go off faster it happens at the rate that it happens. The time it takes to form this cross bridge that leads to this pulling where the muscle fiber shortens takes time. Now what we know beyond any shadow of a doubt is that when a fiber shortens at a specific speed, there's a rate of shortening where it takes place at a faster rate than these cross bridges can physically be formed. What that means is when you are starting to move, you have this mechanical tension from this grabbing and sliding action going on. Once it gets moving, those filaments slide right past each other, which means mechanical tension. The actual force production from that grabbing and sliding is very low within the muscle fiber. They get just taken along for the ride. Think of it as gears on a bike, right? When you're at low gear, when you're starting to get going, you have all this purchase on the bike and you can drive and push, so every bit of your effort goes in the bike. As you pick up momentum, you're relying more on momentum to keep you going. You shift into a higher gear and less of your effort is being put directly on the bike. Now, that's fine for true explosive endeavors where you're trying to jump as high as possible, run as fast as possible. But it's important to know how this works when you are considering specificity for your sport. So if you're engaged in something like powerlifting, where you are rewarded more for absolute force production and your ability to maintain that for as long as it takes to complete a lift, rather than your ability to move that weight in a certain period of time or apply force within a certain time frame, it stands to reason that you are going to be optimized higher up on this curve. Now this curve, this is eccentric motion right here, right? This is lowering under control, we're very strong there. This is isometric, we're still very strong there. The second you move into concentric where the muscle actually has to work to move something, you see this drop off. This is slower velocity, this is a lower relative shortening velocity, higher relative shortening velocity to the point where you're doing truly explosive things like throwing a fastball, jumping as high as you can. You're gonna 
find slower, more loaded movements. So maybe getting off the sprinting blocks from a dead stop is gonna be higher up. Olympic weightlifting is gonna be a little higher up here. You're gonna find powerlifting, hitting a true one rep max squat or bench is gonna be a little higher up here. And that's important to know. So when you are doing speed work, what are you doing? You're coming down, let's say in a bench press, and you're getting this immediate push, right? You're on low gear, you're from a dead stop. You have all of this sliding, this grabbing and sliding action going on, and you're just starting to get fiber recruitment. You're just starting to pull the optimal amount of fibers that you can. Now on a speed rep, as the weight gets moving, you're still not at maximal fiber recruitment. And as you accelerate, these are starting to slide past each other. So as you finish the rep, you didn't reach maximal fiber recruitment. And at every phase of the lift, after you got it moving, you have these uh, little mechanical arms are just along for the ride. So what happens when a very explosive lifter goes five pounds too heavy, they pop the weight up, it comes right back down. They've demonstrated that they're strong enough that they can apply enough force to get the bar moving, but where they failed was they weren't able to sustain that over time because the second that the bar slowed down, now the filaments are no longer along for the ride. They have to actually pick up the grabbing and sliding action. And now you have to be able to sustain that level of fiber, that rate of fiber recruitment to keep it going. So if we're looking at the specificity of each phase of the lift, speed work focuses on that immediate impulse off your chest and then focus on nothing else that's really relevant to a true max effort lift. So while you are doing, let's say, focused weak point training at different heights, you know, maybe you're doing rack pulls or mid shin deadlifts. Maybe you're doing bench presses to a board or off of a pin. You're trying to work different ranges. We're simply trying to reproduce. We're simply trying to make up for the gap we leave by sliding past those points super fast in our speed training. Because what happens when we're on a pin press? Same thing as a, as a, a speed rep when we're at the very bottom. At that point of the lift, we are trying to go from zero to 60 and that's where we're under all this mechanical tension. That's where we're in low gear. So what begs the question in my mind is why would we prioritize all of these different modes of training those specific areas if all we really have to do is move the load at a specific rate that keeps us under tension and keeps these cross bridges forming throughout the entirety of the movement. Now I'm not advocating everything be super slow tempo work, but if instead of trying to light everything up off your chest, instead you kept control and moved at a rate that kept those cross bridges forming, it seems to me like that would be a better developmental tactic and it would be more specific to what we're actually trying to do. And if we're under that load for a little bit longer, that allows us to train at lighter percentages while still lifting long enough to get to maximal force production. Whereas all of our speed work is taking us from point A to point B before that can even happen. So this isn't something that I have applied. I do like to move with a lot of control and a pretty even tempo on pretty much everything I do, but I haven't done any empirical studies on this. I'm looking for them. Uh, anybody that has experience with it, I would be ecstatic to hear it. I am familiar with some coaches who have in the past prescribed, uh, let's say higher percentage work that is completely non-aroused, meaning you don't get hype, you don't try to just bomb into it, that you actually keep control and move it, the minimum amount of force required to go from point A to point B. I've seen that specifically as a recovery tactic, so you could train at higher percentages more frequently, the idea being that the physical arousal is what gasses you out or fatigues you from really, really heavy work. So the idea is that if you take the gas down a little bit, that you can train in that range more often. It seems to me that that actually also happens to coincide with the simple fact that the faster we move, the less specific we are training specifically to increasing absolute force production. And that's where I think the difference lies. So it seems like Western culture is very preoccupied with athletic development, which again is very important. Speed, develops, speed development is very important for athletic development, but we're also kind of on this one note right now where everything has to be speed, compensatory acceleration. You're constantly trying to just blast at the sticking point. And it seems to me that the role of tempo work and the role of non-aroused controlled work is very important and a lot of people aren't doing it. And I think you would get so much more out of the introductory phases of your training if it was oriented towards something like that. That makes sense to me. Long story short, another nail in the coffin for speed work. I think light west side prescribed speed work does not do anything remotely close to what it claims to do. Force equals mass times acceleration is a physics definition. It tells you absolutely nothing about the way that the human body generates force and keeps that force producing. Um, 
So I think that's a cop out. I think if it's done anything productive, it's just a lighter day to get more touches on the bar without blowing your wad because you're still doing a ton of volume throughout the week and you're still lifting very heavy every week. So if you do something that's light, the, the benefit is that it's just not more work. It's not more beat down. It's not that the lighter speed work actually makes you faster with heavier loads. I don't see any logical reason to, uh, to assume that that's the case. So if anybody has any more to add to that, go ahead and put the comments in the comment box or go ahead and take it over to the forum, empire-forum.com. I look forward to the heated debate that is sure to ensue there. Once again, this is Bromley from Empire Barbell. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you.